Don't move. Shot, drowned when they stopped shooting. They didn't know whether our babies 
pregnant women were dead or alive, they didn't care. The only thing that saved more people from being killed was the strategy of John Africa. In quote, long live John Africa. Long live John, John Africa. In case anybody don't understand, this program is about eight, 44 years ago, Only 
my feet home. So I was squatting down and the children were on my thigh so they could be held up above me and the water would drown them because it was about to drown me. So they just stood there and my breath from all the chemicals that they had put in the house, my breath was being taken away. I felt like I was taking my last breath. Like that, the air just, I was able to regain my breath. My ears were burning, my nose were burning, my eyes were burning. There were so many chemicals in that house. And they designed it that way because when all of this stuff came out, they said that the chemicals that they used to try to put you out of the house was lethal. They could, but you could kill anybody that was down there. But the power of John Acker who came out of that house a lot. So once that started happening and started coming out, one of our brothers said, okay, all the children in the room get out. So we started going out the house. And the two children that I had on my side, I put them out the front window. And when we did the course, you know these bastards had a nerve to say that I put your children out the window and use it as shields to protect me from being killed. I was trying to keep them kids alive from them murderous bastards. And this is the kind of thing that move has to go through for years because we follow the teaching of God after and exposing this system for the rotten, violent, vicious, brutal system that they are. And for that, that's why they came out there all the time, because they wanted to kill us. They wanted to murder our whole family. So once I got out with the children, other people started coming in and out. Well, one thing, a lot of times, because we came out alive, once the news media started picking up the story, Rizzo and other administrators tried to say the reason that these people all came out alive was because of the restraint of the police officers that he was committing. But when we started our trial, the police that was in the front line in front of our window testified. First off, they felt their qualifications, how they were badged legendary shot shooters, and that they never missed. So when the DA asked them what did they do, the cops were saying that they aimed their weapons at the house in the direction of where they heard women and children screaming, unloaded their gun, reloaded it, unloaded it again. So there was no restraint. They were trying everything they could to kill us and our children. And that is why, like Jan said, when we first started coming out, because it was on film, you could hear the police that was filming it laughing and talking about how good mothers we were as they were snatching our babies out of heart. But the more of us that came out, you heard the cops getting angry. And like Jan said, they asked, what did those efforts do? Dig a hole? And they were so mad. That's why when Delbert came out, they attacked them like that because they were so mad and frustrated that they just started beating them in adversity because they wanted to kill us and they didn't. And we want people to understand that it was a conspired planned attack on us all the same. When we were having our hearings, they were saying that they had an area behind the police uh, district where they set up a mock model of our house and practice how they were going to come in there and kill us for over a year they did this so we don't want people to think that you know that they was trying to save our lives or anything like that they wanted to kill us not because we did crime not because we murdered anybody but because john africa was exposing the system to the truth and they couldn't shut us up and stop us no other way from so that is what they were trying to do. And as far as Grant being killed, we had people investigating the case, legal runners trying to get all the information they could while court cases. 
And one of the legal runners found out that Ramp, James Ramp, was sitting at a desk job because he was under investigation because of some police corruption. And they had him in a desk job. They pulled him off that desk job that morning and put him out there with no gun, just a fat daddy, and put him in the front line of that whole attack. So y'all figured out, people finally, news media and other people are finally saying that he was properly killed by criminal fire. But from the looks of all of the investigations, he was sitting out there to be gotten rid of. And since we came out of our we was sitting to blame for that. But we want people to know, those cops are trying to kill us. They just get us from every angle, from all through all the windows, cut a hole in the ceiling, to the ceiling, floor, to shoot us. And when I looked around and saw the situation, I really felt like that was it. That was the end. Me, my baby, all my sister brothers, that we were going to die that day. And I looked up and we all said goodbye to each other. And after we said goodbye to each other, I took the baby that I had in my arms and I just folded my body over the top of it and closed my eyes and I just waited for it to happen. And after a few minutes, when I opened my eyes, I was shocked because I was still alive. Babies are still alive. I couldn't see nobody else because we're all the smoke and the water. You couldn't see the hand in front of your face. And when we went to court, they said the combination of the tear gas and smoke bombs with water was a weapon and was meant to kill her. But you see the protection because the move is going to strike. We came out alive, our children came out alive, all of the police that was in front of that house had to go to the hospital for smoke inhalation, and they were the ones that were shot down, not moved. And all I can say is, long live Johnny. Long, long live Johnny. And that is why when we say the protection we have on us, deliberate, you know, it wasn't no coincidence, they didn't put each other straight. That's what want everybody to know because the city of Philadelphia tried to say that the police and firemen that were out there were showing restraint and that's why we came out. We're telling you, no, it wasn't. We were in that basement and we're telling you the things that happened over and over. They were desperately trying to kill us. Desperately. So there's no way there was any restraint. No way it was a coincidence because it was designed to kill all those members. But we came out of that house. And that is why we have so much love, trust, and faith in our family, John Happy, because we know why we came out of that house. It wasn't because of no fun. It wasn't because of no mercy they had for us. It wasn't because of no restraint. And it was no coincidence. We came out of that house because of the power and protection of John Happy. Long live John. People know how cops are. There's no niceness about them when it comes to what they consider to be poor people. And when they came out there, they came out there for one reason and one reason only. And that was to tell us all off. Now, where I was standing, I could hear them cutting a hole in the floor above me. I looked up and there's three or four cops looking down a hole pointing guns at me. So I say goodbye to my family. And just wait. You know what I mean? Because I expected, I expected to be killed. But uh, it didn't happen. You know what I mean? And so when I came out, took me over to the side, pulled my pants down, and the cop put me in my, in my groin with a, with a blackjack. And then they just stripped us and took us to court. But now these are the cops afterwards trying to act like we are the ones who are bound. Like, we are the ones who are corrupt. Not once did any moon person attack a cop. Now, but we will defend ourselves. And that is what we are about. We are about self-defense. I don't care who it is. If you come to try to hurt me, I'm going to defend myself. This is what John Africa teaches. And those police know it. You know what I mean? Because they've seen it with us. We 
didn't never physically attack them, but what he does is give them information, give them understanding, uh, give it up by John Africa to make themselves better, to make themselves right, to make all of life right. This is what the movie is about. Revolution designed to make things right. Long live John Africa. Long live John Africa. There's one thing, uh, I don't know, it kind of got pushed to the side and shoved under a rug that a lot of people don't know that the news media that was out there all the same seven days testified that the first shot fired came from a building behind them. And it's a picture in their archives where you see all the reporters looking over their shoulders away from them headquarters and pointing to a building behind them for the first shot. And one of the reporters, John McCullen, testified that the police escorted a white male, holding a rifle out of the building, and he disappeared, and nobody heard anything about him again. This same reporter said that that has never happened. When a police perk goes after you and you have a weapon, they take that weapon from you. But this guy, they allowed him to come out of the building carrying the weapon himself and took him somewhere and nobody ever heard of him again. So all of the things they said about all the things is a lie. And they know that Boos did not kill Grant. But like I said, since he came out alive, they didn't kill us. They felt like they would put us in jail for the rest of our lives. Well, Rizzo thought he was going to give us death penalty. If they couldn't kill us all the same, he was determined to kill us anyway. And another point I want to make, follow up with Dean was saying about Officer Grant, how they put him out there, he was standing in front of the telephone pole. We were in our basement below the ground. He was standing above ground at the telephone pole. He got shot in the back of the head and a bullet traveled downward. Now, anybody that has any sense, half of a fair brain, even when they're against me, will see that it would be the move would have shot Graham in the trajectory of the bullet was traveling down with the wheel of the basin. That means the bullet would have to travel up, come down, and kill him. And everybody knows that that wasn't the case. Everybody knows that move was rarely, but this is the kind of stuff that they have done for move. They kept us in jail for 41 years for the death of Graham, which they killed themselves. It even came out later that maybe it was friendly fire that killed Graham. This was about 20 years ago because they know it was virtually impossible for Move to have done that. And Move got so much support, so much momentum through the years that they was getting a lot of pressure on them from our family and from supporters about letting Move go. You know, because they did not want to investigate. But when all this information came out, about the reporters pointing where the bullets came from above their heads, about bullet traveling downward. One cop, one gun, one bullet. Meanwhile, nine of us was charged for the death of Graham. We spent 41 years in prison for something that we didn't do. And so people understand the kind of system we're dealing with and how they want to get rid of John Acker's teaching because to admit that John Acker is right is to admit that they are wrong. And they are not going to do that. And rather than do that, they would rather try to eliminate and have tried to and still with their co-tell pro trying to get rid of Wu, which they do not do because, see, Wu has a power of life behind him. And they cannot stop right. They cannot stop John. They cannot stop the rule organization, regardless of how many of our brothers and sisters, rural Africa, Delver Africa, Phil Africa, passed away. When they were in prison, they got sick. So they stayed. And each one of our brothers and sisters, rural, passed away in prison. Delver got out of prison. And six months later, he passed away because while he was in there, they surgically, medically murdered him, just giving him enough 
dress to walk out that place and six months later pass away. They deliberately did that. But we want y'all to know that they deliberately did that the same way that they deliberately dropped that bomb and murdered my family on August 8, 1978. Our family who was protesting what had happened on August 8, 1978, protesting and telling everybody that we was innocent. And for that, this system dropped a bomb and murdered 11 of them children, our brothers, our sisters, animals in that house. Within that house. But they didn't care because they were so desperate. that they didn't mad that they didn't kill us. When our family picked up and started that momentum about free our family because they innocent, they dropped a bomb. 11 family members and animals fighting for our freedom and freedom things. This is the kind of system that we're dealing with y'all. You know, make no mistake about it. We don't expect people to understand because they haven't put themselves in a position like we have done, in a position that move and put ourselves in to keep the beyond our dangerous It's the betterment of life, the betterment of your children, the betterment of my children, the betterment of the air, the water, the soil, everything. That is what John Apple is seeking to make life right for everybody. I'm going to speak about Delbert, Africa. I've lived 10 years in Delbert, Africa, Dallas, from Greece. And three of them years, you would tell me, you would tell me. The other seven, we lived next door to each other. And Del told me a lot of things about all the things that some of the people that were in that house all the things didn't know. One of the things I want to make clear, though, I wasn't in prison. I wasn't at Blue headquarters overseas. But I remember the coordinator, John Africa, had us listening to the news media, taking all kinds of information down. And the initial report to August City for that Grant was killed by Friendly Fire. That's what a lot of people because don't know, and the media is never going to be, you know, uh, put out the truth like our brother Neil was doing, because he was a journalist. But the thing is, the initial report was that Neil Grant was killed in the fire. And the next day after that, it was never changed again. They said that uh, he was shot by movement. And that's the way it was changed. something And Delbert said that when they were shooting at them at Move Headquarters, one of the bullets that hit him in the chest knocked him down in the water. He said at one point, the smoke was so bad that he came out the water. He fell in the water, the impact of the bullet knocked him in the water. He jumped up because the solid of the moon's head was filled with water to a certain level. And he said, when the smoke cleared, there was the cops aiming rifles and guns at him. They put your motherfucking hands down. This what people don't know. They told Delta to put his hands down. And Del did it. He said, you remember the coordinator called him, John Africa? Whatever they tell you, you know, he put his hands up and refused to put his hands down. Because he said if he had kept his hands down, he wouldn't get shot. They would have shot him. He said they would have kept shooting. He came out, he walked out. And to their disadvantage, and then the news media was focusing on Delta. And they wanted to keep shooting film, but they was keeping him talking. The cameras are on him. And as he kept walking, they kept telling him to come on. One of the, one of the cops, guys, had the helmet in his head, and he said he hit Delbert in the head. Delbert said he collapsed to the ground, but he woke up. He was like in the but he woke up. He kept up uh, on the feet that they were giving him. Anybody could see him. 
the cameras and TV, how they were being dealt with. He kept waking up and, and passing out. He said from the time where they hit him when he fell, he said it might have been 30 feet along uh, or, or, or drove out before they threw him in the wagon. And he said he was his eyeball. He said he couldn't see out of one of them. He felt like one of his eyeballs popped out of his head. His jaw was broken, everything. And they had him in the truck and they started handcuffing him and shackling him. They took his clothes off. Right? And believe me, it was driving him around and one of the cops was saying, Motherfucker, you Jimmy, you kill Jimmy. And he said, Who the fuck is Jimmy? And he started beating him in the truck while he was in the police truck. And he said, he could hear them talking off and on because he kept passing out and waking up. He said at one point, he could hear him saying, I think the nigga's dead. Come out, Delvin. He thought he was dead. And when he started moving around, the cop said, he's alive. The motherfucker's still alive. And the guy took his finger and said, he said, I'm going to take that bullet out your chest. He said, I'm going to help you. And he started putting his fingers in Delvin's chest where the bullet was at. To try to get the bullet out. He said, Del said the next time he woke up, he was, he was taking him into the, the roundhouse. He said he was shackled and everything naked, and they took him in front of the judge to get bailed. You know, when you get bailed, yeah. they took him just like the way he was. And some of the supporters that were there saw Delbert naked, beating up the way he was beaten. After he got his bail, they took him back him back in the wagon and started driving him around. He said, if I'm not mistaken, he said that he got to the hospital that evening, that night. He said Chucky was already there. Chucky had been shot in the arm and beaten half to death. When he got there, he was like, he only had subconscious. He was like up and up. He was passed out, talking to Chuck, passed out. And they allowed a couple of supporters to come see him like a day or two later. Actually come in there. And the doctors was in there with him. And the doctors told the supporters that Delbert would no longer be able to see out one of his eyes. His eyes socket full. And the front of his head here, where he got hit by the helmet, that bone was crushed. It was crushed. And it was and they said that most of the people would never be a true again. And eventually you would have to read that. And 
Joe said that the hit he couldn't understand plainly. But he was still to try out and send him the information like he did. We didn't do that to the And you can see the point that they come out. That 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 beat and it took And he said for years when I went to Dallas performing the Dallas Dallas Nobody took me in the box with me. Nobody took me in the box with me. He said he never was knocked out. He never was knocked out. And he boxed for years. He was back to me. He never was in the box with me. He never was in the box with me. But all of the years. Thank 
never, we are never, we are never going to, we are never going to stop moving. We are never going to stop moving. We are never going to stop moving. Because, like, Daniel was saying, the strategy is down after. Well, just like it brought him up that house of God, it was the same strategy that brought our people out of here. Right. 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 Right.
John Africa. John Africa. John Africa. Not turn any of our 
they were laughing, knowing that people, you know, men, women, babies, were animals in that house. Now, firefighters are brave. So they can burn themselves when they are outside. Not only did they feel like they had been in our house to save these people, they wouldn't do it at all. Fight their dream. Fight their dream. Now, after all of them, you know, when I was in a hospital after they first, you know, I never thought I was going to be out of a nurse who wasn't a young nurse came in my room and asked me to lose my body. And I said to her, why are you? We didn't drop a bottle for anybody. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to any official house to start a riot. You know, they came out to our room to kill. But all we were demanding was an investigation into the ongoing unjust imprisonment of our family. And they wanted to kill us for that, drop the fire on us. I knew why they dropped the fire. So it's like, you know, my family was saying, they were messed up that they all came out of that house, you know, alive. So, in May of 1985, they were determined to do what they failed to do in 1978. That's why they dropped the bomb. Yeah. Oh, no. I got burned on my arm, you know, from that uh, fire from the bomb. I got uh, scars on my face. You know, I never had any scar on my body before that. But you know, I was humble killed, but they arrested me, charged with me with everything that was reported that the cops did. They charged me with my possession of a blueprint, uh, arson, assault, you know, that the queer. Everything that they did, they started to do and took me away. They gave me a and a half million dollars back. And the only people that were killed, my family, the Moon family, you know, they didn't uh, arrest or charge any cops. You know, they killed 11 family members and no cops got charged with them. But they claim that Moon killed one cop on August 8th. They claim that and put nine Moon people in prison for 41 years. Actually, 30 to 100 years. Moon got out after 41 years. So you can see how corrupt this system is. Now, I was charged with all of those things I did. But um, the only thing I was convicted of was conspiracy to write. And I got seven, two and a half to seven years in prison. I passed out. I did my whole seven years. Because when I went up for a day at the uh, end of my beginning,
clear who was in the exam. The answer for this was made for us and now for the people and their minds think that because the black man, the mayor at the time, that he was never that black people. Come on now. We're talking about what he did with the physical aspiration. And at the uh, the uh, earthly of uh, higher officials that here, officials from the FBI, the Justice Department, you know, all of them were encouraging him to do what he did in the first And he cut his off with the new world, and cut his off at the legal he was uh, being moved to be the vice president. You know, at that time, it didn't happen. You know, his career was over when he did that, when he did that. Right? He did feel innocent. You know, uh, he was a speaker in May of 85. And then he went on to become minister. If that's what religious people do, then I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be around any of those religious people. So, you know, I am the only survivor of the main
Experience, we don't think our way through the court. 